I'm in uh, Nottingham and I'm joined by Bob, who you may have seen on uh, Al Mui's Happy Hour or his recent DVD. Now, uh, how are you doing anyway, Bob? I'm doing fine, thank Lovely. you. Lovely, good to know. Um, tell us a bit about yourself. A bit about myself. I'm a, I work for a print company in Mansfield called Linear Print. We're, uh, I work in a management team called Constant, uh, CIG, which is Constant Improvement Group. Been there for 21 years and uh, slipped into Happy Hour and all that with Al just by chance. Just by just so by. was it was it just a random kind of in the how did it all kick off? It all started by me wanting to go and see Al in a uh, show at Nottingham two years ago. Mm. No tickets available, and uh, there was a competition which was to enter it and go and see him do a radio show at Virgin Radio. Mm. And uh, I entered the competition, won two tickets with twenty other people. Uh, went down to Virgin Radio one Sunday afternoon. Obviously, uh, we got on quite well. Al started taking a proverbial out of me, and uh, we went on from there. Oh, interesting, that is. Um, so, since all the appearances, have you uh, like met anyone famous through it? Uh, quite a few people. When we do the shows, we get to uh, go to the green room before and after the show, so literally everybody that's on the show we get a chance to meet. Uh, most Probably most famous is the one that everybody is Buzz Aldrin, the chap that's been on the moon. Mm. Uh, we're a really nice chap. Signed autographs for everybody and mm. uh, sort of unique, so to speak, from what he's done. Um, the, with going back to sort of like the Al Mo things, um, what are you going to like the hap the new series of Happy Hour or anything like that? There's a possibility. Nothing's, <laughs> con nothing's confirmed yet, but uh, it's looking that way. I did get a, a mail from Al the other day, which said he was going to try. And they were sat in the office trying to write me out of Happy Hour, <laughs> but he said at the end of it, it's a joke. So uh, it's looking promising at the moment. Do you actually enjoy being like a part of the happy hour? Yeah, it's a unique experience yeah. to get in there and meet, uh, to meet somebody and sort of work, for want of a better word, with someone that I've actually paid money to go and see perform. Mm. Turns into being quite uh, an experience to, to be there, part of it, um, get to meet him, get all the rest of the people, actually see how the production is being done. It's a really good experience. Um, what do you think will happen in the future for you? Do you reckon this will kind of like get more like production companies is, like sort of interested in you or I would love something like that to happen I mean as I'm getting on in years it'd be nice to be able to move on to something like that um, I've done a few charity events with Al and the rest of the guys as well so mm. as I get around people might see recognize me you never know something <laughs> might something might come of it yeah well you never know dear well uh, now one thing that actually is on my mind is uh I know obviously have you got a MySpace I do have a MySpace. Yeah. Uh, did, did, how, when did you set that up? Uh, set it up in uh, probably September this year, I think. But that's a bit of a guess. What, what do you think? You what do, what's your opinion on it? Because a lot of people have very varied opinions on it's MySpace. It's a very good way of getting to know people. There's some people on it that are not genuine, but there's a lot of people on it who are genuine. It's a great way of setting up a network of friends, and you know I think it's great. I would agree with that actually. Um, as well, let's think about a couple of random things like. We'd like to know like your opinion on global warming. I mean, that's everyone has varied opinions yeah, on that. Yeah, everybody has an uh, opinion on global warming. I think that when you've got to look at the planet as it is nowadays, and obviously things are changing, um, everybody's got a, a little bit of something to do with it, even you know, like recycling, mm. uh, travelling, carbon footprints. Um, the deeper you get into it, if you look into it, I have a friend who's uh, into a lot of... Uh, eco stuff is my eco warrior so to speak and yeah. when you get to understand how people are there's a lot in it that can be done so everybody's got a little bit to play in sort of preserving the planet so to speak what what's your what's your favorite food favorite food beans on toast beans on now that's now that's different have you ever tried cheesy beans on toast i've tried cheesy beans on toast <laughs> lots of nice grated cheese on top of the beans i'm hungry um, <laughs> Talking yeah. about food, oh. <laughs> beans on toast. It's nice, quick, easy, so, and away you go. That makes sense. <laughs> um, what's your favourite drink, either non-alcoholic or alcoholic? Uh, alcoholic. Uh, Thixton's Old Peculiar. If you look underneath the bottom of the la label, it says Legend. <laughs> it does it. It does. So, uh, if you look at Thixton's Old Peculiar, it's Legend at the bottom. I think it's a bit unique as the only one there. What kind of um, what kind of TV programs are you into? Uh, anything and everything, really. Um, at the moment, Spooks. I 
I think that's really, really good. I enjoyed mm. that right from right from day one, and especially as they seem to chop and change characters and don't mind writing people out of the drop of a hat. Um, comedy programmes uh, or or anything that uh, will make me laugh. I'll sit and watch anything like that. Mm. Um, TV is just basically anything. Willing to try anything. Sounds good. Um, as well, what kind of music are you into? Music. Uh, if you looked at my iPod, you'd be quite surprised. There's uh, there's a lot of stuff on there which is Ministry of Sound. Mm. Really? Yeah. So for an old chap, I've gotten quite wide and varied. My younger days, when I was sort of 17, 18, uh, Roxy Music and Brian Ferry, and obviously the good stuff they're still going today. Um, but once again, anything and everything. I'm not. I don't write anything off without listening to it. At the moment, I've just been listening to the Foo Fighters, so uh, getting into those, listening to that. So it's. Uh, I'm a quite a broad-minded on anything like that. Good choices. Hobbies. hobbies. That's a oh, that's hobbies. a really important. <laughs> issue. Really important thing. You see. What, what kind of hobbies have you got? Me hobbies. Uh, believe it or not, I am a glider pilot. What? Glider you pilot. know what? Tell me a bit about that, because I'm really interested. But gliding. I don't understand. Isn't it? Do most gliders say have one wheel underneath it? I'm really confused. Yep, one wheel. Because uh, I had a I had a really interesting argument with someone not long ago. They said, well, they must have wheels on the end of the wings. But they have some can have tiny wheels at the end of the wings, but some of them just have a little piece of metal that rubs on the ground. So uh, oh. yeah, I've been gliding for 21 years. Mm. Uh, it's a great way of getting out of the out of the way, mm. using nature's power for a sport. Travelling hundreds of miles if you want, without anybody knowing you're there. You're not making any noise, no pollution, and uh, it's a fantastic way to spend a few hours in the summer and is it, the winter. Is it, as is well. it expensive? Or? It depends. It's um, if once you get into once you've got trains and you want your own glider, then you can spend what you want. So hmm. you can go from a couple of thousand pounds up to one hundred and twenty, one hundred and forty thousand. So hmm. it depends on how much money you've got in your pocket and what you want to do. Depends whether you want to sell your house. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, it is. Literally, some gliders cost more than some people's houses, hmm. but. Ouch. I think I'd rather spend my time in the house. So. <laughs> yeah. uh, my other passion is scuba diving. Mm. So um, uh, only in warm water, though. Yeah. I don't scuba dive in, in in British waters. It's mainly uh, in the Red Sea. So mm. I go to the Red Sea for a week and chill out, get underwater. Both of them are very, both sports are very same. One you're in the air, you can't hear anybody. Underneath the water, you can't hear anybody, and you you're literally on your own. So it's a it's a good way. Of, Spending some time chilling out and meeting people, mm. because once you do it, you meet people from all walks of life and all different countries, and uh, which is great. <laughs> well, thank you, thank you very much. You've been yep. telling us some really interesting stuff. That's good. And uh, I'd like to wish you the best for the future. Okay. No thank problem. you very much once again, Bob. Cheers. Thank you. <laughs>